In this last section of this chapter, we're going to look at service costing. Now, so far, we have been focusing on costing in a manufacturing environment. So, where we produce and sell a physical product onto our customers. A service costing environment is where we are cost accounting for services or functions. So, for example, accountancy services, delivery services, or perhaps banks. So, service organizations. There isn't too much to this area for the F2 syllabus, and there's just a couple of key things we need to understand and consider. So before we get on to a question, we're going to consider what are the characteristics of a service costing environment. How does a service costing environment differ to a manufacturing environment? Well, first of all, in a service costing environment, there will be very few direct material costs. So remember, we're not producing any physical units that we're selling on to our customers, so we don't have those high direct material costs associated with producing a physical product. In a service costing environment, we have an intangible product. Meaning, what we are providing to our customers is not something that our customers can physically reach out and touch. The other characteristic is simultaneity. meaning the customer receives the service at the same time as it is provided to them. So, for example, if you look at public transport as a service that is provided to users. When I go and get a bus somewhere, I pay for the bus journey at the same time as I'm going to actually travel on that journey. I can't inspect the journey in advance for quality. So I receive the service at the same time as I pay for it. There's no way of checking in advance to see if I will be happy with it. In a service costing environment, there is no inventory. So you cannot store units of a service in your warehouse for the following year. So, they are the key characteristics in relation to a service costing environment. Before we get on to a question, we're just going to consider one of the key issues in a service costing environment, and that is the cost unit. Now, when we looked at cost units earlier in the course, we said that a cost unit was a unit of product or service and for which costs could be ascertained. In a manufacturing environment where we're selling a physical product onto our customer, it's very clear what the cost unit is. If we are manufacturing and selling tables, then our cost unit is the tables. But what is our cost unit going to be in a service costing environment? So, for example, Service organization, our cost units are more difficult, potentially, to identify. Let's say we provide that delivery service. On what basis do we charge our customers? What is our cost unit going to be? Will we charge them a cost per kilometer? We have to travel in order to deliver our goods. Maybe that might be a reasonable cost unit. 
But what about the quantity of goods we're carrying for them? Surely that also relates to the costs associated with the service. So maybe instead of a cost per kilometre, we would also want to consider a cost per unit delivered for them. It makes sense to charge someone more if we're delivering 10 tonnes of material for them than if we're only delivering something perhaps very, very light. So in a delivery service environment, perhaps our cost unit might need to be some combination of the two. So our cost unit might be based on kilometre and weight. So we're going to charge the customer based on two variables, how far we have to go to deliver their goods and how much weight we are carrying for them. Now once we've established what our cost unit is in a service costing environment, um, questions on this area tend to be quite straightforward. What we really have to remember is that in a service costing environment, when we're calculating the cost per service unit, it's going to be the total cost for the period divided by the number of service units provided. Let's have a look at an exercise to put this into practice. So we're told an accountant is setting up his own business. He will be working a 40-hour week for 48 weeks of the year. His expenses are expected to be £35,000 and a markup of 30% will be applied to cost to establish the charge per hour. 95% of his time will be chargeable to customers and the remainder will be spent um, reviewing changes to statutory requirements. So what we need to do is calculate the charge per hour for his accountancy services provided. So, in this service organisation, what is our cost unit? Well, I would say our cost unit is the cost per client hour. So, we want to spread the costs associated with running our business across each hour we work for our clients. Our cost per service unit will be equal to the total costs divided by the number of service units provided. Now we've been told in the question what this individual's total cost will be, they're £35,000. So what we need to calculate then is how many service units or service cost units is he going to provide in the year. Now we've been given the information we need to calculate this. How many hours in the year is he going to spend working on jobs for clients, so working on client accounts. Well, we have been told that he's going to work a 40-hour week for 48 weeks of the year. However, 95% of his time will be chargeable to customers. So he's not spending all of his time preparing accounts for customers. So we just need to take that into account when, we're, when we calculate the number of service units he's going to provide. So the number of service units then will be equal to, he's going to work 40 hours for 48 weeks and 95% of that time will be working for clients. So the number of service units provided will be 1,824 
client hours. So the cost per service unit then are our total costs of 35,000 divided by the number of service units, 1824, and you should get 19 pounds, 19 pence. So in order to cover his costs, he needs to charge his clients 19 pounds, 19 pence, for each hour he spends working for them. Now, he doesn't just want to cover his costs, he also wants to earn a profit. We are told that he's going to apply a markup of 30% of cost. So we can calculate that then, 30% of 1919 gives us five pounds 76 which means then our charge or selling price per hour is just the sum of the two 24 pounds 95 pence